I think I think the term knowledge management is super interesting. So can you talk a little bit more? Like if you are to a primer to a to say a ten year old or a let's say an early college going student about what is a no about what knowledge management is. How would you walk someone through it? And and to and to add to what Vignesh is saying, I want you to actually talk about knowledge management. And I in fact read about your program management. so therefore to me uh, you know i want to really talk, i want you to talk about both because program management is very casually used many a times so therefore uh, it's important for you to talk about knowledge management and program management right right uh, so uh, you know uh, one of the simplest question to ask for any organization is to my people have whatever they need to do their work available to them with least possible bureaucracy so you know uh, uh, we we accumulate data we talk about big data we we have so many different sources by which we are collecting information however when a person is trying to do their own work are they in a position to make the best use of whatever is available in their organization to do a better job now this simple problem of not having access to right data right information when needed and uh, for whoever it is needed is a very major problem that we've grown into once we started digitizing things so we built silos that there are so many protection layers and so many things that at the end of the day many organizations struggle to make sense of the volume and complexity of their own accumulated data the approach of knowledge management really says uh, in my mind i'm sorry so <laughs> i'll just share what it means to me so uh, it means organizing these various components in a way that of course there is good data governance and yet people are able to get the insights and contribute to problem solving across the board no departments no no bureaucracy no silos and this can beautifully be achieved using software control software allows you the kind of flexibility that traditional systems would never offer so you can have six different places where you house your data for technical reasons but you can also have microservices interacting with those different data warehouses and retrieving only what is needed for every single persona and every single involved person so when you start connecting all these individual silos of data in a meaningful manner and for each persona for each role start figuring out how do i empower this person to act better and how do i leverage all that we have gathered so far to strengthen this one person that is when you are thinking of a knowledge management based approach so that's that's my take on it so i don't know if it makes any sense <laughs> yeah vignesh you asked that question no no i think it does make sense but it's just also that i will i would say that if you were even talking about knowledge management systems from say a college goer like a almost a faculty member to a student perspective i think sometimes even most members of the faculty they have something called formal knowledge management but the ability to update it the ability to revisit past knowledge the ability to dissipate it accurately correctly in terms of actual you know uh, pedagogical uh, taking the right pedagogical steps to uh, deliver the impact that it has to create for the student i think that's it's, it's almost like it's a two sided ecosystem where you have the knowledge in place you have one party giving it and then you have another party receiving it so how 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 does a dynamic of this sort of an interaction play 
Let me give you an example of a bone marrow transplantation setup where a new patient has come in and the doctor has been told that this person wants to undergo a bone marrow transplant. We have a lot of children who have thalassemia, a blood disorder where they would have received years of treatment in various different centers before they come for bone marrow transplantation. Typically, any center would start with Tell me what is your past history and show me your paper files and let's move forward from here. That is a typical, any, and when you go to any new hospital, that's how it, the journey starts. What if, what if the nurse could actually press a button and get a summary of the treatment which this patient has received over last so many years at their home center? What if, all the blood products given to this patient and every single time this patient had a reaction and if this patient had a major health event, what if all this information with proper authorization only after proper sort of, only when you are placed to receive this information correctly was made available to you at the click of a button. So that's what actually today our systems are doing. When a new patient comes in from a clinic which has a data sharing agreement of a reasonable type in place, they are able to make sure that without having to call 10 people to figure out what has been done in the past and then make sense of it using mails and WhatsApps and whatnot, or rely upon the patient to describe every single trouble they had, you could actually use that other part of information residing in some other server somewhere else in a very meaningful way to ensure that the context is set for what is happening next. In fact, I'll share with you one more interesting thing. How many times does it so happen that uh, when you go for a lab investigation, does the lab asks what has happened to you? <laughs> so it it's, it's, may sound unusual, but for good laboratory analysis to happen, the laboratory needs to know the clinical context. Now, the clinician doesn't always have the time to provide that context to the lab. That lab may not be inside your hospital. That may be an outsourced lab. So, uh, Jagriti has built a labs platform which automatically pulls in the relevant components of information from the patient's charts and makes it available to the lab something which otherwise would have taken a number of calls to figure out, which automatically improves the quality of the report and the outcome which the sending hospital would have looked forward to. I'm just giving you these small examples on how these silos can be broken and data can, uh, so uh, the lab benefited from getting proper information about the patient. The doctor benefited from getting a more accurate report from the lab and the winner is the patient who gets faster diagnostics done. This is just one example. Really, you know, what has transformed uh, the capabilities of IT today is microservices. The ability to control at a very granular level how a huge diversity of providers and systems can be harmonized. And I'd like to use the word platform. So Jagriti, you know, health platforms, the choice of that word platforms is a very deliberate one. We don't build monolithic systems. And the first thing that our systems do is learn to talk to any other system. So in the transplant, one of the transplantation unit where we are involved, the fingerprint access, the blood pressure, which is being monitored, the temperature monitors, all of them are networked to the system. And these are not very expensive, sophisticated pieces of equipment purchased for this purpose. These are your regular devices. Only thing is now people are coming up with microservices and you can always have systems talk to each other. So once you enable this kind of data flow across systems, then Achieving what we say is a knowledge management approach where people, so the, going back to the example that you took, 
if a student was able to use a couple of keywords to figure out what has been done on this topic in my college ever in the past, <laughs> so can, can, do we have any 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 institution where for, I want to know how many people failed at this project? Can I just put in a keyword and find out? <laughs> Why should it be so difficult? I don't want to know who failed. I just want to know what failed. If I know that, I'll make better decisions. So knowledge management is really a philosophy which you implement through software systems that we are very passionate for. Now Understood. let's talk about program management. Uh, you know, there are three components to any place, systems, people, and processes. And a fine balance being maintained between these three, particularly when there is change happening, is absolutely critical. One of the problems that a lot of us uh, uh, suffer, because uh, one of the causes of a lot of pain is because we try to jump too far at once. Right, so I want to bring in agility. So when you try to drive in a change, it's not just the system that can change, it's not just that notice or an email which can be sent out to people expecting them to change their behavior. It has to be done at a much more subtle level to ensure that there is less anxiety, more reliability, and uh, honestly, more fun. So program management is nothing but doing that uh, backend work properly to ensure any changes any uh, interaction between the systems, people, and processes are beautifully orchestrated to create harmony. So, like I said, we are uh, so we are a software company. We shouldn't probably talk about non-punitive approach being taken when it comes to discovery of errors. But if you don't do that, then there will be resistance to using electronic platforms. It is so closely interlinked. If your platform is going to find more errors, then suddenly you cannot have negativity in the organization as if today, since the time the software has come, there is more problem. <laughs> the problems are happening. Now you are discovering them. And you are discovering them faster. So it needs you to prepare the organization to be able to absorb this change and deal with the changes that come together with it. So that's very, very critical. Uh, so we are now moving as an organization, Jagriti is moving away from just program management and deliberately putting in two more words in there, human-centric program management. <laughs> Ensuring that the first goal is to make sure that the humans involved feel like winners. And then you chase your business goal, then you chase everything else that follows. But first, it's the users. <laughs>